an idea to put Jeroboam, who was actually a son of one of the servants of Solomon. He wasn't the bloodline of Solomon. So they're going to put Jeroboam as king. Boom, let's make Jeroboam king. He'll do what we want him to do. He'll take the yoke off her name. He was with us when we was crying out to Rehoboam. Jeroboam here, he's our man. So Israel rebelled against the house of David 19 until this day. And it came to pass when all of Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. You see who made him king? The people made him king. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be better than Rehoboam, ain't he? Y'all think so? No. <laughs> there was none who followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. And actually, Benjamin too. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred and four score thousand, hundred eighty thousand, chosen men which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shema, the man of God, saying, Speaking to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto the whole house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, you shall not go up and or fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearken therefore to the word of the Lord, and return to depart according to the word of the Lord. Verse 23, Then Jeroboam built Shechem in, in Mount Ephraim, and dwelt therein, and went out from this, and built Peniel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If these people go up to do sacrifice, in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. Then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord. You, wait a minute, did you see that? He's worried because he's now in the north. The temple is where? In Jerusalem. Now the people make a pilgrimage to where? To the temple. To offer offerings. Lambs, burnt offerings, doves, turtle doves, they're poor. And so he's like, if they go down there, they're going to go back under Rehoboam. So I've got to do something. So he starts panicking. What happens when we start comparing ourselves among ourselves and there's competition in the body of Christ? I'm going to relate this to our day because I'm telling you, there's pastors that have meetings at swelling restaurants and they talk <coughs> about their people, their pernicious or what do you want to call them, the, the congregation and, and who left and went where. These big congregations, I promise you, they meet. And they talk about this stuff. And they're competing with one another. It's, they'll tell you, we run this church like a business. It's not supposed to be run like a business. This is a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. Amen. But Jesus said you made it a den of thieves. You're competing with one another. You're counting heads. You worry about so-and-so because they give big offerings. You don't worry about your soul going to hell. You are worried about the offerings that they're giving in the offering plate. And you think people love this stuff. You wonder why people don't come to church. You wonder why the, the unbeliever runs from this kind of stuff. Yeah. Because they can feel it more than we can. Right. Once you've been sucked into the delusion, you're sucked in there and you think it's right. Mm -hmm. While the unbeliever says, man, there's something wrong with this thing. Y'all got something going on here that ain't right. Mm -hmm. Every time I come in here, y'all want more and more and more. And you just keep adding a chandelier here and a chandelier there and this there and this that and there. And what in the world? What, why is this a business? It's a social club. Am I supposed to pay a club membership? <laughs> Y'all, that's because competition. We got to have a bigger church than so and so down the street. Oh, that's right. Jeroboam said, "Look, man, I might lose some of these tribes. I got ten tribes over here. He's got two. <laughs> Division of men, denominationalism of men means denominator means to divide. Hello." I mean, a, a crazy man from Princeton could figure that out. We should be able to figure it out. Denomination is name right. Denominator means to divide and separate. That's not right. This is what's happening. And they're saying, look, I may lose some people. I may lose somebody. So guess what I'm going to do? What do you think he's going to do? What do you think he's going to do so he don't lose people to go and worship and turn back to the Lord? Because when they go in that temple and they feel the presence of the Lord where that Ark of the Covenant was back then, they're like, you know what? I don't care about all this division. I'm just going to stay right here in Jerusalem. Where I don't like Ray of Bone, but I love the Lord. And I'm going to stay right here. And he was saying, I can't have that. It says right here that they'll turn to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even under Ray of Bone King. They may take his heavy yoke just to be next to the temple. 
Some people take the heavy yoke of the pastor just to be in the sanctuary because they like the people in there and they're part of the social club. They don't even agree with the doctrine coming forth, but they're still in the same place and they'll stay there until they die. And some of them die spiritually because they stay there leaving being led into a ditch the whole time. There are people that stay in cults because of, well, I just like being here. I like the music. Ah, oh, the music makes me feel so good. Man, I, I, I like the charisma, the charisma of the preacher. Y'all, it's the Word of God that saves and anoints and supplies and seals and delivers. Amen. Follow Him no matter what. What did He do? I hope I, I think it done. There it is. So He said, uh, and they should kill me, and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel. But he didn't take counsel of the Lord, y'all. No. He took counsel of himself. That's right. And he says, hmm, what should I do? What would appeal to the people? What would look good? What would cause people to come here? Oh, maybe I'll give away a flat screen TV. Oh, let's see. Maybe we'll have motocross people jumping up on the stage. Maybe I'll give me a big old bed and just talk about sex and just put it right there. Big old place in Dallas did that. Ed Young. Just talk about it all the time. And, and I got such a big name, people are going to love me anyway. And they, and they will flock right to it. Maybe I can say there's many ways to Christ, many ways to God, and fill my place up with 40,000 people. Just, I don't want them going over to the truth. Yeah. No. So I got to do something. What did he do? He made two goat calves of gold. <laughs> And said unto them, It's too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Watch mm -hmm. this. Because you got places, secret sensitive movements, telling you it's too much for you to be in. It's too much to, to try to live the word of God coming out of that King James. So we changed it to the Message Bible. <laughs> and you can go to the Message Bible and you get you a little different take on it. We got a little spin we'll put on there. And we'll tell you it's okay to do this. Why some of the old hellfire brimstone preachers will tell you to go to hell. We won't tell you that. Here. We won't even mention the blood because the blood offends. We're not going to mention about sin. It's too much for you for us to mention sin. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. There's your golden calf. Oh, it's there. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost again. Thank you, Jesus. And he says it's too much for you to go to Jerusalem because when you go to Jerusalem in that temple, that means repentance. That means offering. That means your faith has got to be in Christ. The offering before you enter into what? Relationship. The Holy of Holies. Where the Ark of the Covenant is. There's repentance. There's an offering there. There's a sacrifice. He said, there's too much to be sacrificed. We're going to build you a golden image. How about that? My goodness, he probably got the same idea that them people back in Exodus 32 got. Mm -hmm. 